to get back to our view, we want to go to the view map. We basically don't want to go into project map once we've set up our view map. So we'll double click on the ground floor and that's going to bring up all of our section markers so we can understand how they were working. We were last looking at this section one and how we can change its settings. When we go into the section one, we can see that we're seeing what is cut through and we're also seeing what is in elevation. Sometimes that's nice, sometimes it's not necessary. Let's look at the ways that we can change that. If I go back to ground floor, again we'll go back to our save view. I'm currently using the method of horizontal range called infinite. If I change this to limited, we can see it brings up another line on the screen. This line is defining how far this view goes. And if I move this around, you can see that it's moving around as a box. If I select this, I can offset the limited range. So therefore, if I change this, I'm going to reduce it to sit just in front of this wall. If I then view that in section, we can see it's no longer showing the windows that were in the distance. It is showing the joinery that it was just in front of me, like the kitchen joinery. Of course, this isn't being represented well, and that's fine because I don't really care about it at the moment. That should be zero, and now that will represent a little bit better, but still not fantastic. If I go back to ground floor, we're not seeing a lot of other information. Now, because of the type of drawing that I'm doing, there's not going to be much difference at all at the moment with limited or infinite depth. So in order to explain this well, I'm going to go to section three now. Let's save this. Section three, I need to change the layer combination to section, so it's showing the appropriate type of information. Press create. And we see it's going to add all of the other things that I need. So again, in this case, we're seeing both windows or doors in the distance. And we're also seeing an elevational element in the distance. If I was to change this, select, change to limited, I could choose maybe to show not this wall. And I might bring that back even more because it's also going to hit the roof if I don't do that. So I don't want to be cutting through the roof. That'll be awkward. I want to stay this side of the roof. And let's have a look what that looks like. So I'm no longer seeing the elevational element here, but I'm still seeing these doors. If I don't want to see these doors, I can then... Let's do this properly. Let's select the view and I can just reduce it. I can move it. I can move it to just in front of my view. But if I'm basically doing that, I can just change this one to zero depth. So if I then go zero depth, we can see I don't see anything in elevation. I'm only seeing what I chop through. Now, when I'm doing very complicated sections and showing things in elevation would be very confusing, or if I'm showing wall sections and I only want to focus on the wall section and not anything in the distance, that's another reason why I will commonly use zero depth. This therefore allows me to focus on what I'm cutting through and not anything in the distance. We can see that this one didn't move with the others, so I can move this down into place as well. All right. Let's redo that again. Solid element operation. These are our operators. This is our target. And I want subtraction with upward extrusion. So we can see that's representing nicely. Again, I'm going to more detail than I need to because if I'm only showing this as presentation for DA, I don't see any of that information. All right, so I've now looked at how to create sections, both with infinite, limited, and zero depth. Elevations are very much the same. The difference is that we care a lot more about what we see in elevation and basically not at all about what we're seeing in section. So if I select this view, just like with the section, I then need to change its layer combination, save current view, this is my waist elevation. 
I want to change this to my layer combination called elevations and we'll leave everything else as it is at the moment. So it's adding in a slab here and because I'm chopping through the slab it's showing it as solid black. Now if I don't want that, if I want that to be solid white, that's when I need to start making some changes to my representation. So if I go to ground, I don't want to just do this for one elevation, I want to select all of the elevations while I make this change. So I'll select the elevation tool, press control A, so they're all selected, go into the settings, and then go into my model appearance. When I go to my model appearance, again, this is basically flipped in terms of what I'm trying to show. In this case, I don't really care about what's cut, I care a lot more about what's uncut. What I care about in this case is the only thing I should actually be cutting through is things like my terrain and maybe some landscaping elements. So in this case, I'm going to change the cut elements to be uniform surface color and I'm going to make the background, the cut line pen, 19. Let's view that west elevation. And so we can see here that that is now what is being shown. We can go back and change that. Select all my elevations, go into the setting, under cut elements, uniform, uniform surface color, Cut fill, non-shaded, surface fill pen, non-shaded, and surface fill color shaded. So there's lots of different options of what we can do. What do I want that surface to be represented as? In this case, I just want it to be white. I've got one that's called gloss white, so that's probably going to be the best option. Now I want the surface to be white, but I don't want the pen to be white. So I'm going to change that to be a thick line. So let's just make it 10 for now so it's very thick. Go back into West Elevation. Now it's showing all as solid black. We'll do this one more time. We can also do this without going back to the floor plan. I can select these elevations, go into the settings, If I untick this uniform pen, press OK, it's still showing this based on the fact that it was presentation. Now if I change this representation, I can override the setting and now it will have the intended result as before. I can also change the way that that works. I can have it as cut fill, non-shaded, surface fill, non-shaded. And now this is giving me more the representation that I actually want to see at least for the cut elements, which is in this case just the terrain mesh. Now what do I want to see in elevation? We can see that some of these elements have very thick pens, and now these are defined by the pen settings of what I'm using. I can adjust this. Let's have a look at the different views in which we can create elevation settings. In this case, Depending on what I'm doing, whether I'm trying to create a presentation drawing or a DA drawing or a CC drawing, I might change these. I might want to add shadows. I might want fade distant elements. And then most importantly here for the uncut elements, what do I want to see? So we'll minimize cut elements. What do I want to see? Do I want transparency? I don't really want to see through the glass. 
Do I want uniform pen? Do I want something like the last one? So texture fill shaded. When I add texture fill shaded, what I'm now seeing is the vectorial hatch, so the, the pen line for the brick, but I'm also seeing behind that a image, an image which is representing brick. Now these two are not aligning, which is a little bit awkward, but we see it gives a lot more depth. Similarly, the roof is doing the same thing. So I've got a pen line, the hatch, and I've got the materiality, an image which is describing this. I then need to decide which way round do I want this to see. Is this good? This is the way that ARCHICAD is set up now, that it can give you a lot of options with the newest version of ARCHICAD. Do I want all of that information, or do I want to turn some of that information off now? So if I go to the uncut elements, I'm going to turn off surface cover fill foreground. So now I'm seeing just the image and not any of the hatch, none of the lines that are representing that. So for a DA, this may be more appropriate because for DA, the council really cares about having a good image representation or a color representation of the exterior. Now I don't need to do that. I can use different types of colors just to indicatively represent materiality, but this is probably a better option. So I'm showing a reality, or as close to possible as reality, of what the walls and what the roof in particular, the main materials of the project, will actually look like. Then, when I get to for construction or CC drawings, I might then go into the settings and change their representation. So I might then change that by turning the hatch back on and then changing the representation. So it could just be simple, something like surface, color, fill, non-shaded. So now we're seeing a, just a plain color and then a fill over the top, a plain color and then a fill over the top. But it's still graphic, there's still shadows, there's still color. If that's still too detailed, we can change that. We can change it to uniform pen. I'm not going to override the pens though. And I'm going to turn off the shadows or turn off the sun. Okay. And so now we get a very graphic technical representation. So I'm showing all of the elements. The pen's too thick, so I need to change the representation of the hatch. But now this is probably more appropriate just in terms of its representation for something like CC or for construction because I don't have the color anymore. So we can adjust the settings of the elevations a lot depending on what we're trying to show.